Well, here's a tool brand that I don't have on the channel very often. This is a Fiber Metal Products. They're actually a company that's been around for more than a century. They're owned by Honeywell, and they make welding safety products. They're one of the more premium of making welding helmets and that type of stuff, goggles, etc. And oddly enough, they've been making, well, I guess not so oddly, they've been making weld fillet gauges. What is odd is this is their only hand tool, period. Everything else in their catalog is all safety products, except for some weld fillet gauges. There's a variety of manufacturers of these weld fillet gauges. They're not super common, but if you're more professional about your welds, all they do is just make sure for a given material thickness, generally speaking, if you weld a half inch thick piece of material, you're gonna want a half inch, quote unquote, half inch thick weld. The whole point to these types of gauges, and actually let me, if I'm gonna talk about, grab the half inch. Actually, I'm realizing at least on these, they all have these, the same part number, but they have an A, B, C, so it lets you know how they're all organized. If you have a half inch thick of material, then you're gonna take the joint and you're just gonna put this together. This is four fillet welds, so for 90 degree joints inside 90 degree joints, which is actually uh, one of the most common types of welding to do. A lot of weldings, welding things together at perpen perpendicular to each other or at right angles. So this just makes sure that the weld is actually thick enough. And then what this is doing is making sure if you have a weld that's dished or con concave, that means that you haven't had enough filler material. So even though the weld may have come up far enough on the material, you just didn't deposit enough metal for it to be as strong as the base material. So all you're doing is making sure that the weld is going far enough you know, on each side of the material and to make sure that you've laid down enough weld bead. And these are just held together through a little screw. There are, all these gauges all exactly seem to be the same except for some brands stamp the sizing and information on them which I like better than what this appears to be, which is, uh, it's either silk screening, uh, you can feel it. My goodness, no, I was about to criticize this. This is actually stamped, been painted over, and then with a precision sander, had the rest of the paint removed, leaving only black markings in the stamped area. So this is actually stamped with paint-filled stamping. So it's actually going to be pretty durable and hold up. Others don't do that. I was actually surprised. I was feeling it, and I thought, well, these are just going to be silk screen, but it just didn't really make sense to uh, have like a weld gauge, which is going to get, especially ones that are stacked on top of each other, be able to have the lettering scraped off. So the lettering won't get scraped off very easily on a gauge like this. Anyway, we'll go ahead and take this little gauge and kind of give an example of what these are for. And by the way, you can get these things for like 20 bucks on eBay. I think these fiber metal brand ones are like 50 you know, just full retail from MSC or something like that. Here we are with my die cart. So this has some varying quality welds on it. So anyway, if I take the, this material is about 3 16 of an inch. It's a little bit thicker than eighth of an inch, but you just have this gauge and we can see it's hitting the weld. So it's obviously not an eighth inch. We'll flip over to the, the 3 16 side. And so we can see that indeed the leg of the weld is coming up to being 3 16 and on these what you have is the black line which is you can see that this notch is deeper in one direction than it is the other it's 3 16 in one direction and then it has a line just to make it easier so you can put it up once you know it passes over the the top so it's less than 3 16 but almost and you can see the line is almost lining up with the base of the weld down there so it's this weld is almost within specification and then what we have is the convex and we just flip this over and what ends up happening is if this ends up going into the corner we know that the weld doesn't have enough material in it a better example would be right over here on this side where if we line this up we can see that weld foot does not come out far enough it's too far up on this piece of material and it isn't engaging this lower piece of material quite enough. And then if we flip, flip it over, we can see, interestingly enough, both that there is enough material, but also since it's improperly positioned, 
we can put this other end, the concavity um, corner, <laughs> lost for words, but if you can put it all the way up and that little nub doesn't hit the weld, then you know there's not enough material here and this weld would be, uh, would not pass inspection. It would be considered substandard for um, structural purposes because uh, there just isn't enough material there and it, and it isn't uh, engaged enough. And this would just be fixed by laying another bead right at the foot here. But in this case, this is not a very good weld and isn't properly positioned and doesn't have enough material. And these gauges are exactly for that. So even as a do-it-yourselfer, you can weld something up. And if you actually want it to be structural, if it's kind of important, um, then you can just get one of these gauges and it makes it really easy to say, oh man, I didn't get, I didn't get enough material in there and you just lay another bead. So that's my little video about the fiber metal <laughs> weld fillet gauges. Actually, a surprise, you know, now that I'm getting a little bit more in the welding, have a welder, actually reviewed a couple of them now. Um, something like this is just kind of an easy kind of peace of mind thing where either you're just welding something to get it to stick together and that's good enough, or if you're actually doing, once again, something structural where you want it to be strong, then you say, you know, for a, how for the fact that you can get these so cheap just makes it a simple way to say, hey, I didn't get enough weld in there for the weld itself to be stronger than the material that it's attaching. And that's generally the, the deal with welding, is that when you weld something up and you like test it for strength, the weld area itself should always be stronger. The base material should break away from the edge of the weld rather than the weld itself being what fails. The weld should always be stronger. Anyway, appreciate you all watching. See you next time.